States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like for the board to consider moving on uh, two agenda items for the benefit of people that are here tonight in presenting uh, items. Melanie and uh, Barbara Jennings with us, and, uh, <laughs> and Serena Pugin. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, board members, for letting us come tonight. Uh, we come tonight asking for your sponsorship at the $6,000, $250 level. We've been very generous in past <coughs> years to support this effort, which does go back to support our students at the University and Community College, and I hope that you'll consider to do so as well. We have an outstanding speaker this year, Dr. David Oshinsky. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning author of Polio in American History, and he is a professor at the University of Texas in Austin. The uh, date of the event is October 13th. The day starts out with a student lecture, which we fill Jacob Brown every year with 1,500 students from our area uh, schools. And then the evening event starts at 7 o'clock with the lecture and post-reception. Thank you for being here with Thank us tonight. Uh, this is a, an action item, and so uh, I'll look for a recommendation from any of the board members. So moved. Second. Second. Hosa, second by Mr. Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. You're very much welcome. And uh, it, it is a... For the uh, 6250, correct? Yeah. <laughs> for the 6,250, yes. Okay. The next item, uh, I have, uh, I don't know. We have the uh, consideration and approval of a sponsorship for the 2011 City of Brownsville City Managers Golf Classic Tournament. I know Charlie was going to be here. I don't think he's he's here. He's here. Okay. We did do the sponsorship last year as a tournament sponsor for ten thousand so. dollars. Hello. Hi, Mr. Kepler. You got the, the podium. Mike, thank you, sir. I'm, I'm sorry I was waiting outside. Uh, in relation to our golf tournament, first and foremost, I would like to thank you. This will be our third annual tournament that we uh, that we are sponsoring this year. Um, all this started when we started realizing uh, financial situations in 2008 or so, and we wanted to keep our momentum for our recreation programs, our skills programs within the Parks Department. As you know, the Boys and Girls Club left about that time, so we took over the facility as well, one of the facilities, and have now turned that into the main recreation center for, the, uh, for our Parks Department. So we, uh, during the summertime especially, we uh, obviously take over a lot of the responsibilities of of uh, having a lot of the children participate in not only any athletic events, but we also have skills programs, helping them with homework and things like that throughout the parks facilities. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we, we take care of or help with about four or 5,000 kids that we feel we service, uh, either, either playing basketball, uh, football, uh, wanting to do homework, volleyball, and things like that. So. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would like to say thank you because you have participated in this program the last few years. Uh, Mr. Brujak, uh, when we first thought of this idea, it really helped out. The first year we were kind of nervous whether this would go or not, but uh, 
it worked very well. Thanks to many people helping out, and, uh, and Mr. Bujak and his his staff helped us uh, extremely uh, in many ways with this project. So it's, it's been it's gone very well. It's been very successful the last few, the first two years, and we're going to keep it that way in the third year. So we'd appreciate any and all assistance you may uh, offer us. Mr. Gabler, how much have you been able to raise, been able to raise in, in the last two years, more or less? Uh, Totally well, uh, uh, amazingly, the first uh, the first year that we had this was uh, thanks to all of you and uh, Mr. Bujak helping out his staff, a lot of the city personnel, uh, a lot of the private sector. The first year we raised uh, well over a hundred thousand uh, dollars, which was you know, you know, and I th uh, we had tears after that. We th we thought if we raised five or six thousand, we'd be happy. But in the second year, a little less, maybe seventy, eighty thousand dollars, but. We've done very well with this. I think it's a very worthwhile effort. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so I am looking for uh, a recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Kabler. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. From the board. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion for supporting uh, Mr. Nojosa. For 10,000. Dr. Last Morales. Year. So for uh, so this is our first and second to recommend a $10,000 sponsorship donation. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Okay. Motion passes, and uh, you know they they do uh, have come in uh, in taking the void of not having the Boys and Girls Club. So uh, I think this is a very important cause. Okay. Then uh, the next item will go back to our normal schedule, uh, which would be to. I need a motion to go into a closed meeting uh, pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.071. So moved. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We'll be uh, in closed meeting for about 30 minutes, and we should be back uh, here at about 6.30. Thank you very much. An item from our closed meeting, and uh, Ms. Rusiak, or I guess uh, we'll, I'll entertain a uh, a motion on the security services. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, and preface my remarks by saying that um, the all security companies that were under consideration uh, were very well qualified, and they all um, we all have a lot of good friends in all of them, uh, and we thank them for their um, uh, presentations. However, um, I make a motion that we award to Valleywide Security. Um, a contract for three years with the option to um, every year uh, to renew their contract um, in the amount of $243 and um, $243,260. Um, that's my motion. I have a motion from Mayor Martinez. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Garcia. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much for your all's time and, and all the, again, all the security companies that made the presentation. Okay, uh, <coughs> Mr. Brusiak. Uh, Financial report? Yes. <coughs> Someone had to take the heat. Raise the depth ceiling. <laughs> I'll be going over the uh, financial performance as of May 31st, 2011. Uh, we do have some good numbers to, to share with you today. Uh, on this one slide, uh, we show uh, net operating revenues here in line three, year to date at 107 million, 115,843, 16 million coming in in May. Uh, adding other revenues and interest and other non operating revenues brings our total gross revenues to 111,293,791. Uh, to get to the adjusted gross revenues for the city transfer calculation, we back out fuel, which is 33 million uh, year to date. Uh, fuel and energy costs or wholesale energy expenses related to uh, off system sales of 1.3 million, and then our support for uh, uh, our contribution as a member of, of South, the Southmost Regional Water Authority combined O&M and, 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 and debt service of 3,207. That leaves a, uh, a balance of 73,657,582 uh, as adjusted gross revenues. This is the, the basis for calculating the state transfer. 
which uh, based on this amount uh, uh, calculates a seven million three sixty five seven fifty eight and backing out the usage uh, net sem uh, uh, as of May, a, a cash transfer is $4.6 million. O&M expenses and other non-operating expenses, line 15, uh, total to $36,364,646 uh, year-to-date. Debt service, uh, $15.1 million. Uh, this is of a total of close to $23 million in debt service we have annually. Total requirements, excluding fuel and, and southmost contributions, are $51,529,454. This uh, leaves a balance to surplus of 19,393,525, of which, as I mentioned, uh, uh, a net cash balance to the city uh, of 4,631,155 uh, has been accrued through May, leaving a balance uh, available for internal uses to PUB of 14,762,370. Actually, it's both the, the PUB and also to fund the, uh, the economic stabilization contribution to the city. Uh, we have an annual uh, CIP funding uh, in our budget of seven million three fifty, and an annual uh, economic stabilization uh, subaccount uh, assisting the city of two million five hundred thousand, uh, of which we've accumulated uh, one million six sixty six. Um, this leaves a balance uh, available to surplus of, seven, of five million seven forty five three twenty two. Uh, so that uh, uh, that is a very favorable balance. Uh, to PUB, uh, primarily from, from electric, and, and uh, uh, will be up for consideration in August or September for utilization of, of, of the amounts. Um, we have transferred to the city $1,250,000 of the uh, accumulated balance here, so uh, we will have, uh, as of June this week, um, another 625000 available for the city uh, as part of the $2.5 million. In, in graphic format here, comparing uh, our, our uh, actual numbers to budget numbers to prior year actuals. Uh, net operating revenues of 107.1 million uh, exceed our budgeted uh, uh, expected numbers uh, by 2.9 million and are over our 2010 actual by uh, 9 million at 107 versus uh, the 97.9. On the growth side, uh, we are at 111 million. Uh, versus 108 budget, which is a, a 2.7 million favorable variance, and slightly under uh, 5 million uh, of our under our 2010 actual of 116. The adjusted gross revenues uh, are 73.7 million. That's uh, 10 million over 10.5 million over our budgeted uh, projected numbers, and. Uh, a, a, a little under five, four and a half million under our actual uh, 2010 numbers. Fuel and energy costs are costs continue to be under budget, 33 versus 38.3 million, and in line with uh, actual numbers for 2010, 33 million. O&M expenses, uh, we're uh, continuing to have a favorable balance or variance here of, of five and a half million under budget, the 34 actual versus uh, the 40.2. Uh, almost in line with, with actuals uh, from 2010. Balance available surplus, 19.4 million. Uh, balance uh, available transfers out after, after uh, funding uh, uh, our, our cash transfer here to the city of 4.6 million is 14.8. <laughs> and as I mentioned, this 14.8 has funded our entire uh, CIP contribution scheduled for this year of 7.3 million. Uh, almost 1.7 million of the 2.5 million uh, city stabilization assistance and uh, leaving 5.7 million in the, in the surplus account. Uh, the electric fund has uh, provided the uh, most part of the, uh, of the surplus, uh, but, I, but I, am happy, I am happy to report that the, the water and wastewater continue to be uh, self-sustaining this year as compared to, to last year when we were running negative balances. So uh, 1.1 million, 2.4 million. Uh, not, not, not a lot of money, you know. When, when you can take out the uh, the transfer part of this, but it is, it is uh, uh, a change to see water and wastewater running positive. <coughs> uh, the electric sales consumption uh, in, in KWH sales here, we continue to be over the 2010 uh, actual levels and the five-year averages. Uh, we're over uh, 2010 by 2.1 percent. 
uh, you'll see the, the the difference here in this box uh, 16 million 208,074 uh, kwh over the 2010 actuals on the water side uh, we did uh, continue our upward trend between uh, april and may uh, shooting up to 690 million gallons uh, uh, very favorable compared to the actuals from 2010 uh, we we are at uh, about 14.8 percent uh, year to date um, above the year to date numbers for 2010. Uh, uh, to, uh, the, the numbers for June uh, will, will continue somewhat a little bit, uh, and then of course the rainfall you'll see uh, in, in in my June report or July report uh, the impact of the rainfall here most recently. Wastewater uh, follows the same trend as as water, uh, with uh, about a 12 and a half percent uh, uh, difference over 2010 actual amounts. Precipitation here for the months of February, March, April, and, and May were very little precipitation as compared to the blue line here for, for 2010. Uh, we will see a, a little bit of an upward trend here uh, to reflect the two to three inches of rain here most recently uh, experienced. Uh, and uh, We'll, we'll just uh, wait and report the impact of that on our water and wastewater uh, numbers. Temperatures continue to be uh, pretty much in line with uh, the 2010 and, and the, uh, the five-year uh, averages uh, at 83 uh, degrees here for the month of May. This graph uh, uh, compares our monthly May 2011 average bill uh, for the 1,000 kWh uh, residential user, average bill of 96.61 uh, here, uh, and as well as the previous 12 months of 97.8 to other local uh, uh, utility providers or service providers. Uh, as you can see, uh, our 96.61 uh, is very favorable compared to most of the utilities here locally. Uh, all except uh, Amigo Energy here, uh, coming in at 96.15. On the 12-month uh, average, uh, the only one uh, below us here is, is StarTex. Uh, most other uh, utilities uh, are, are above our 90.78 12-month average. Uh, we continue to be very competitive. When compared to other municipal municipal utilities um, uh, were pretty much in line as well. Uh, 9661 compares pretty favorable to, to the other utilities. Uh, Kerrville experienced a, a little bit of spike there, uh, but for the most part, uh, we're, all, we're all in sync as, 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 as municipal providers. On the CIP side, we do have 106 million 264 uh, annual spending plan uh, through May, we have uh, spent and encumbered uh, 29 million, or 27.5 percent. Uh, most of the major projects or major spending here is in the wastewater uh, area, uh, of course, uh, with with the grant funding and, and, and the hour projects underway. We did have uh, 2.8 cumulative uh, spent and encumbered for water, 4.6 for electric, and 596, 186,000 for um, general type projects. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, coming to the board here uh, in, in late August, September with the 2012 budget, uh, both the O&M and CIP. Some of the CIP uh, will, will, will be carried into the 2012 plan as, as we continue to, to uh, manage these multi-year time projects, um, and, and we'll be assessing the, the financial uh, impact of some of these projects. Uh, most of a good portion of the projects were scheduled for uh, bond proceeds or commercial paper. Uh, we, we have uh, funded uh, uh, some projects with CP, but uh, we'll continue to monitor the, the needs for, for uh, additional funding into 2012. Our ARA grant uh, totaled 46.1 million uh, through May. A uh, total of 28.1 million had been spent on, on the 13 projects that. Uh, that are currently underway. Uh, we will be reporting a, a couple of uh, completions here later on the agenda. Uh, we have, uh, through May, received uh, reimbursements of 26.1 with pending reimbursements of 2.0. And uh, of course, uh, all along our goal has been is to, to have zero uh, disallowed costs or you know, staff continues to dedicate 
uh, uh, their efforts in monitoring expenses and and uh, and, and uh, to avoid any any questionable cost uh, down the road. Distribution on the water side, um, uh, this pie reflects the the, uh, uh, the 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 three resources that we have for for water dis treatment and distribution. Our water treatment plant number one uh, has contributed 37.25 percent of the needs. Uh, water plant two, 37.01, and Southmost has provided 25.74 um, towards our uh, total needs. Um, our share of the uh, southmost uh, treatment distribution has been 91.22 percent, or uh, 1 billion 319 million 531 uh, 531 thousand gallons. Uh, uh, we also reflect here the the take from the other participants uh, pursuant to the uh, the contracts. And that concludes my performance report. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Any questions from the board? Mr. Garcia, with, with regards to some of the graphs that you went through in, let's see, earlier in the section, I believe it was page five, just people watching this at home would then see your graphs a little bit later, I think it's eight or nine, showing temperatures and showing usage and all the other stuff. Um, to see the disparate, the disparate numbers when you start looking in five as to Revenues, gross revenues, net operating revenues, and adjusted gross for fiscal year for our current fiscal year versus last year. And why are we, if, if everything is so high, why are we down? And I just want you to explain to, to somebody. Why are we down the revenues? Uh, but why why is fiscal year 2011 lower than fiscal year 2010 when all those other indicators are are currently through the roof? No. On the year today, some some of it can be timing. Uh, uh, we'll we'll continue to see what what the June numbers reflect in terms of the billing cycles. Uh, yeah, we did see the May the May numbers go up. Um, um, we, we had I think we also had some windfall. That was that windfall. Windfall piece. Too oh, when you look year. at the combined numbers, I'm just saying yes. versus 20. I'm just saying when, yeah. when somebody's looking at our 2011 numbers. And you look on, I guess, yes. slide number six or seven, and you see, you know, we have electrical through the roof, water, wastewater is doing very well. And then you look at our revenues versus uh, last last year, yes. and huh. they're off. Okay. Right? On a combined say? basis, yes, last year uh, PUB did, um, did uh, have a windfall. Uh, the uh, Some of these numbers reflect uh, uh, some settlement proceeds, um, and, and we're continuing to compare them. Uh, on a monthly basis, uh, those those monies came in 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 December of 2009, part of the 2010 period. So since since uh, last December, we've been comparing them. Um, but when you look at the um, and, and and then some of it was um, it fell into into part of the adjusted. So that that's the main difference here. Now the the. The additional revenues that we captured in this one adjusted gross was, was 13 million. So you can see how we've gained ground. Even though we only have a 5 million uh, variance here, uh, the, the initial difference was, was more than double that. Uh, so now but the, on but a, the main difference came from that windfall. windfall. Right. That, that's what right. made the additional excuse revenues. The numbers, or excuse had. the graphs versus what we're, we're seeing this year. Now, on a utility by utility basis, uh, some of it is timing, and some of it is like water and wastewater. If if you see the the high consumption and only you know somewhat of a the the, the surplus balance that I showed you, is because last year we were running negative in, in those funds, and not and we not only cut up to the zero to to break even, but are making up money as well t this year. So so the, the gap has been significantly uh, taken care of. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, um, I'll go ahead and go to item number five. The only thing I had, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bruce. Yeah. On the calendar. <laughs> uh huh. We'd like to try to have a special board meeting the first week in August to present staff's uh, findings on the design build pre firms. We had said we were going to do that. We're evaluating them right now. Followed up by on the 8th for the actual design build. Uh, firms will make their presentation to the board at the eighth board meeting. So if there's a day in that week of the, uh, the 
first week in August they had that. We were looking at maybe the fourth August. special meeting just strictly on that item. And, and how long is that meeting going to be? Charles, any idea how long? Hour? An hour and a half at the most. Okay. So is August the 4th good for most of the board members? That would be a close Monday session. Or so it's a Thursday. Thursday. The morning or afternoon, I guess. Uh, Probably the afternoon. 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 Okay. Fourth okay at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. Or uh, it sounds like everybody's schedule is open. 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Bruzek. Okay, I'll go to um, the next item, uh, which is uh, consideration and approval of award for sheet pile installation <coughs> to repair levy at Old Raw Water Reservoir. Uh, Mrs. Mayor, Goldman. Uh, Mayor and members of the board, this is one we've been talking about with the neighbors, punched a hole in the, in the dike, and we've, uh, we're ready to get started to repair that. We've got uh, all the quotes for this to do the work. We'll explain why why the difference in price and why we need to do it the way we're doing, but we're ready to do this and, and get that project. It is still a critical item. It needs to be addressed immediately and uh, ready to go. And Gigi's going to do a brief presentation on that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, just as a reminder of, of uh, what happened, uh, we observed the seepage uh, on the southwest corner of the old reservoir back in January. And we did uh, continue observations through May of 2011. One of the approaches that was uh, recommended by HDR was to, um, <coughs> to uh, use sheet piling on top of the levee. And back in May of uh, 18 of 2011, we received three proposals based on 300 and linear feet of sheet pile at a depth of 35 feet. Uh, we started negotiations with Odin Contracting Inc. for one of the methods, which is diesel hammer method. It uses vibration. At that point, we developed a concern that the levy could not structurally support the contractor's construction method and the equipment. It was 80,000 pounds. Um, at that point, Blue Iron Foundation offered another method that's called the silent piler method. This method is free of, uh, from noise and vibration, and also the equipment that's used is only half the, the weight, which is 40,000 pounds. Um, as soon as they drive the first sheet pile, the equipment gets on top of the sheet pile, and that's the way the construction continues. The, the equipment is not on top of the levee. So we decided to go with that method, and while we were doing the investigations, we found out there was another seepage um, at about 50 feet away from the original limit of construction, so we decided to add an additional 100 linear feet of pi uh, piling. So at that point, uh, Blue Iron gave us a revised proposal for $523,000. So PUB staff recommends approval to award the sheet pile installation at the old reservoir to uh, Blue Iron Foundations for a total not to exceed amount of $523,000. Thank you, Mrs. Gomez. I'll entertain questions from the board, Mr. Garcia. Um, just a quick question. When, when you all went through the, the addendum in the sense that it seems like there was a change to the specs regarding the types of system to install the pilings, mm -hmm. as well as the quantity right, of linear feet that were required, was that put back to everybody else as well? Yes, or and actually Odin construct, uh, Construction told us that they could not provide us that method, and based on the information that they had, they recommended that we went with that method. The sound mm -hmm. My question is that, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that, you know, their bid, they came down from $1,400 a foot to uh, $1,162 a foot, which they're giving you on the extra 100 feet, $107,000 value for $30,000. What, what was, how come so much of a change? Okay, when they gave us, when everybody provided us the, the cost proposals that you see here, they were basing it on American steel piling. And when, when they looked at the different types of uh, methods in, in the steel, they also mentioned that they could bring in another type of uh, steel, which was from um, <coughs> out of the country. And that's the, the $523,000 is based on that. So if we would have gone back 
and talk to the other companies that would have given us, that would have provided us the, the estimate based on that, not U.S., but out of. And my other question is that uh, this, as far as the 523 they're charging for the 450 feet, mm -hmm. that's on the proposal based on the preliminary information provided by HDR, which does not include any soil borings, or specifics other than the uh, approximate length and depth. So are they going to come back later and say, well, after the soil bo borings, we found this, 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 and we're going to? They already have the information and the estimate that they provided stands. Mm -hmm. So this preliminary information <coughs> does not apply? What what it states over here from Blue on Line? The, on the estimate? Uh -huh. it, 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 it says they're giving you the estimate on preliminary information, you know, that does not include the soil borings, and, and this, this is what it states over here. And Charles, the yeah, I think HDR did the final design on the filing, <coughs> so they add on the final design that, that HDR did after they did the soil borings and the final design of it. But so HDR was the one that did the actual design for the piling, so they're basing it on the soil borings already. Well, this is uh, HDR using uh, where it says option one and option two. Yeah, option. Mm -hmm. That's the initial. That's part of the yeah. language from the original proposal. Did they provide and that information prior to, to them submitting this revised proposal? What, that what's we'll the information? Back later on? And, and no, the state. information that was provided for the board item was from the original. <coughs> That's what Charles is saying. He just doesn't so want to do change have, order, is what you're no, talking that, that, about. You know, exactly, and you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Sure. We have the soil borings already, and the, the design was based with the soil boring. Uh, yeah, the, it, price is, the price is based on the final design and the soil borings taken into account. Yes. Because the initial contract when the sip, seepage came uh, was done with PBS and J, which is now Atkins. Yes. Okay, and, and that, and then... HDR came into the picture. No, HDR uh, is their sub consultant. Oh, okay. HDR did the design. And you'll see it on the next board item. No, that's what, that's what I was referring to. But but my, my, my question or my concern was, you know, that if it's, you know, preliminary findings and then they're going to come back and say, after we did so so, we got to come back and. The designing ba is based on all the information already provided with soil results and, and everything else. So there shouldn't be any cost overruns on this. Not based on that. So uh, I, uh, should, you Dr. should Dr. clarify Morales? your motion. No. I'm sorry? I said if there's a motion to approve, it should be with that proviso of, of saying that it's with a final understanding that the soil borings and everything has already been done. Yes, they have been. Okay. Dr. Well, I just So the sheet filing, it's the sheet file that they call it, is the, I mean, that's the best, the best way to get this done. I mean, it's not like a Band-Aid or. No. No, that's it's, it's the yeah, correct way. It's the, the right best, way to do it. That's the right way to do it. Right way to do it. While, while maintaining the reservoir in operation. I mean, you could empty it and rebuild it. That's another method, but that's not an option. It's not cost effective or Why is that not an option? I'm, I'm just because we, the reservoir is required for water supply. So we couldn't take it off. operation of the, of the water system. We can't take that off. We don't have enough. No. Or afford to lose that reservoir. No, no, and, that's, and that's, that, was, that, was, that was my concern because as reading through the report, it really, <laughs> it really kind of concerned me as we were going through it is, is it looks like the stability of that reservoir was really called into question because you had seepage A, B, C, and then it really started seem to to tumble. And, and we so did re, we did check the whole reservoir, and those are the only areas where we found this, and we took care of the problem. So as far as then, so to Mr. Nahara's point, and to Mr. Uh, Dr. Morales's point, this then this solution is a long-term solution. It's not a short-term kind of band-aid because band -aid. we can't take it off off offline. That's correct. But it's a something that we make that investment, it'll shore us up, and it should keep us for so to clarify the uh, design <coughs> there's this picture right <coughs> which one are we doing the one on the levee or the one that the cuts orange across? or the yellow one it's the yellow one but oh. it has an additional 100 feet and it goes around that spill box so it, it, it adds a, pictures. A, another 100 feet 350 plus 100 Oh, I don't have that picture. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you do. It's in your. I do. It's in okay. the packet. No. Thank you. Oh, okay, the spill. Okay. Got it. Is there any further questions? 
Okay, well, this is an action item. PUB staff recommends approval to award sheet piling installation at Old Reservoir to Blue Iron Foundation, ensuring LLC for total not to exceed amount of 523000 That's a recommended action. I have a motion. I'll go with a motion to approve it based on that they won't come back as far as with the preliminary findings of you know, the soil borings have already been done, and uh, this is the final price as far as 5.2. So to clarify, it's just go ahead and go with the recommendation and just making sure that the, the soil borings have been, have been done. That design is based on on those soil borings. Right. Mm -hmm. we'll confirm that before we award that. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. Mr. I had a second by Dr. Morales. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And any against? Motion passes. Thank you, Mrs. Gomez. I would encourage the board to come out and look at this when they start. Never seen anywhere else. Have you caught any of the beavers? Have you seen them? Yes, any beavers. <laughs> they ran them away. They moved out. So. Thank you. Uh, item number six, uh, consideration approval for a professional service agreement with Atkins, formerly PBSNJ, to provide administrative and technical support for raw water reservoir leak investigation. Mrs. Gomez. Okay. This is um, the actual PBSNJ, now Atkins, contract that we had uh, where they're using HDR as a subconsultant. The original amount of the contract was for 30000 based on preliminary information that we had. Once the, the investigation was done and we figured out what we needed to do, the scope of work changed and we added some other items and, and one of them was the actual design of the piling. And uh, the amount of the agreement changed to $79,000 from the $30,000 amount. So staff recommends approval of a professional service agreement with Atkins to provide administrative and technical support for the raw water reservoir leak investigation with a total not to exceed amount of $79,000. Now, this has already be, been signed. It was a was done on emergency, emergency basis. Directed by me, given the urgency of the situation we had out there. And uh, HDR had a dam expert that dealt in these type of failures, and we went ahead and got him on board as quick as we could. And, uh, I appreciate it, Mr. Brusak. I know you you kept all the board members up to speed with what was going on in this particular project, so I appreciate all the hard work that you've done on this. Uh, any discussion on this? I, I just have a question. I mean, are we asking um, either HDR or Atkins to look into the the, the well-being of that second reservoir that we have there, just to ensure that as we go sure. through that, is that part of the scope or yeah. the, the new reservoir? The new reservoir already, adjacent to it. There. Okay. there was an investigation done on that one. Any further questions? Uh, do I entertain a motion? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion passes. Item number seven, um, <laughs> consideration approval of a resolution approving Brownsville Public Utilities Board staff review of electric and water service rates, fees, and charges, and requesting the City Commission to amend Charter 102 of the Code of Ordinance entitled Utilities to Approve and adopt a provision for a 12-inch fire support connection and to correct certain omissions related to the general service large demand customer classification. That's <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, this is a two-part uh, request uh, on some um, uh, code changes that we're going to be uh, seeking City Commission uh, approval for. Uh, our, the process is to, is to get a, a resolution approved at the board level and then uh, continue with, with the City Commission. The two parts, uh, one is, is to um, add a 12-inch a uh, fire support connection. Uh, we currently stop at 10-inch, and we do have a key account customer. I'm going to let uh, Ms. Ana Gosano talk about that had requested this, um, this uh, uh, size of a line. The second part is, is to correct some omissions in the code right now concerning some electric provisions um, that, uh, that apply not just to our general service demand, accounts but to our general service large demand accounts uh, the the general service large demand rate was introduced in 2005 and and although we incorporated that rate into the code some references uh, in other provisions 
uh, were not carried through, and, and we've been operating under, under the, the, the practice to, to apply them. Wherever they apply to the general service demand, we made them applicable to the general service large demand. So it hasn't hindered or, or deprived any customers of, of benefiting from some of the provisions, uh, but uh, we do want to correct the code. And I can let Ms. Ana Lozano also explain uh, what, what some of those areas in the code uh, uh, are about. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board and mayor. I don't know if there are any questions. Like Mr. Garcia said, there are two different separate issues. The first one is in regards to a 12-inch fire flow connection charge. In our ordinance, we actually only go up to 10 inches, and we haven't had a customer have the need for a 12-inch. And so CK Technologies is actually the customer now that requires that. Uh, the fire marshal has actually given them the pressures that they need, and their engineers have determined that they need a 12-inch connection. So we run the lines and now they need the connection and we just don't have a monthly fee to charge them. So we're asking that we incorporate that. We do have a, a fee, a suggested fee, a recommended fee, and so we are asking for consideration to, to approve that. The second part, does anybody have any questions on the fire flow section? Okay. It, it, it's an unusual request and we're just taking care of a, a customer that has that need yeah it's just a larger requirement we actually at one point we stopped at eight inches and then we had customers come in that needed 10 so we went through the process and now we have a customer that needs 12 inches so we're going to accommodate them are there any other questions regarding that okay now the general service large demand rate like mr. Garcia <coughs> said we adopted the rate in 2005 it's a general service rate open to customers who do qualify for it there are certain other uh, penalties adjustments credits that customers can um, uh, qualify for, but unfortunately the language in the ordinance right now only states general service demand and large industrial service customers, both general service rates, published rates. Now we just want to incorporate the language to add the general service large demand rate into that language because it's also a general service rate. Did that make sense? Anybody so, have any questions? So we're just uh, updating that whole Yeah, we just, for consistency, we just need it to, to flow through the entire ordinance. Any questions? From uh, is there, I know we haven't had to date, but I mean, is there, uh, as we expand and, and develop uh, a 16 inch line, or I mean, are those things that uh, would it not be prudent to just go and ask once or set this? The rates it's now? a possibility. We could always incorporate larger sizes now. I don't know if we just want to. <laughs> yeah. Take a big building like CK. So we'd need a million square foot type of building to, to do it. It's oversized for that. Yeah, and it also depends on what they're doing yeah, at the facility. No, 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 it's just, okay. Might as well, right? He's thinking about Brownsville growing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of right. right. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Lozano. Thank you. Um, unless there's any further questions, uh, this is an uh, action item. Uh, re staff recommends approval of the resolution. Move. Second. Dr. Morales, Mr. Vasquez, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <laughs> Item number eight, consideration and approval to extend the external audit services with Patillo, Brown, and Hill, LFP for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2011. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, this will be the, the second year of a three-year uh, engagement with uh, Patillo, Brown, and Hill. Uh, last year, or the year ending September 30, 2010, was uh, the first uh, audit period. So we're just coming uh, before you to, to seek the second year uh, extension uh, at, at the same uh, at the same fee of sixty thousand dollars. Okay, uh, there's a motion uh, by Mr. Nachera, Dr. Morales. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion passes. Then we have the consent items one through twelve. Unless somebody has some questions and would want to have me take them out so that we can discuss that particular consent item. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve consent items number 1 through 12. So move. Second. Move. Second by Mr. Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, consent item. We have uh, now a public comment. Is there any public comment? Aye. No public comment? Okay. Well, then I'll entertain a motion to, to adjourn. So move. Uh, Again. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody being here tonight. Aye. Thank you. Aye.